Our host for today's ceremony is the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Randy A. George. Please stand for the singing of the National Anthem by Master Sergeant Matthew L. Smith from the United States Army Chorus and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Major General William Green. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the and the home of the brave. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, please bow with me as we ask God's blessings upon this promotion ceremony. Almighty and everlasting God, our gracious judge and faithful advocate. You establish all authority on earth and in the heavens. Today, we come before you with thanksgiving to witness this promotion ceremony and to thank you, O oh God, for your grace and your favor. You have blessed Major General Joseph Berger in your mercy and shaped him to lead at the level in the United States Army. By your hand, you formed your servant into a man of character, competence, commitment, compassion, and care, who stands for truth, honor, and justice. Bless our time together today, O oh God, as family, friends, fellow soldiers, and colleagues join one another to honor a truly exceptional leader. Thank you for the Berger children, Caroline and Jeb, and other family members and friends gathered in person and virtually to celebrate this milestone with him and his loving wife, Brenna. As this great army couple assumes a new mantle of leadership and stewardship of the United States Army JAG Corps, fill their lives with your peace that surpasses understanding. And Heavenly Father, may the lamp of liberty continue to shine bright on our nation on the United States Army and on your servant as he attends to our Army's most precious resource, her people. We pray all these things in your mighty name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General George. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing great? All right, how many in the, all in the back there, how many of you are Jags? Raise your hand if you're Jags. All right, so every, I got to say this last week, um, know and remember every one of my Jags as I've been through the Army, but uh, for the rest of us, I can tell you if you were expecting a legal action to happen today, it's probably not gonna happen, so <laughs> given everybody else that's in here. So I appreciate everybody being here, uh, Joe, real honor uh, to be a part of this. I'm gonna welcome some folks. We got, uh, um, was interest, interesting that uh, Tom Monheim, um, who's here, and I asked him where he met Joe, and he said Afghanistan, so, or Iraq, I think, so it's interesting. Um, how many of those linkages we have. But Judge Kevin Olson is here with us. Judge Gregory Maggs here with us. Mr. Patrick Murphy, good to see you. Um, here with us, uh, Miss Caitlin Clark, who's here. Um, 
our OGC, Kerry Ritchie, uh, Mark Averill. Uh, we got the director of the joint staff who escaped for a little while. He's on the clock. Um, the DAS, the Sergeant Major of the Army. Great to have everybody here. And we're here to talk about Joe Berger, um, his family, and what's brought him to this point and what makes him the absolute right leader for our JAG Corps and for our Army. Uh, I think Joe appreciates the fact that most of our decisions at this level are hard, but this one wasn't. Joe is a gifted, visionary leader who inspires and propels teams around him. His talent, drive, and experience make him unquestionably ready to take this next step. The biggest concern we had, actually, was the selection of a TJAG for the greatest land fighting force in the world who had such an affinity for sailing. <laughs> and that's a little suspicious to us, Joe. But in the spirit of inter-service cooperation and being joint, we decided it was okay. So we'll get to the formal part shortly. Um, I did want to tell you, Brenna, that uh, Joe wanted to have bagpipes here at this ceremony. Inside joke, we said, we said no. Um, all right, so Brenna and Joe are getting ready to celebrate their 27th anniversary next month. They were introduced by mutual family friends and had met a couple of times before, but the encounter that really started things was the 1995 Army-Navy game, which Army won 14 to 13. I'm always happy for an Army win, but I'm even happier that it helped kickstart that connection. Brenna runs the grants program for the National Endowment for the Arts. When I asked Joe about a time where she provided critical support, he said the easier answer would be to find a time when she didn't, which has never happened. Brenna has not only been with Joe every step of the way, but has volunteered and made an impact in every community that they've been in. From running a tax center in Germany, early in their marriage, to mentoring young professional spouses and doing work in the neighborhood and with their church now. She's also picked up some of Joe's affection for sailing, but as with Joe, we're gonna forgive that. <laughs> Brent, I wanna thank you for all that you've done to support your soldier over this last 27 years, and then all that you've also done for our soldiers and families, and what I know you will continue to do over the next couple of years, so thank you. How about a big round of applause for Brent? Okay, Brenna and Joe have two amazing kids, Jeb and Caroline. Jeb is over here with us. He's a handsome gentleman up front with a really, really good head of hair. Um, he's an elect uh, electrical engineer with Northrop Grumman, who likes to remind his dad that he may have the clearance to learn about Joe's work, but he doesn't have the need to know. Uh, Jeb is uh, from his parents, endlessly curious, exceptionally resilient in the face of setbacks and builds bridges with people everywhere he goes and was even an essential part of the first high school team that put a satellite into space. So I know I was not in any of those classes in high school. So Jeb, great to have you here. Caroline is watching from England right now where she's studying at the University College of London to get her master's to become a museum conservator. She's intelligent, passionate, and focused. She's also a talented artist. She made the drawing, if you pick up your programs, of the JAG Corps branch insignia, doing the entire image without stopping or lifting up her pen. So that's some talent right there. So I'm always, uh, I'm never surprised about great army kids that, you know, we move them around and just how um, amazing they are. So it's great to have you um, here, Jeb and Caroline watching. Uh, Brenna's parents, Ella, Ellen and Kevin are here, sitting just behind uh, Joe and Brenna. Um, so is Joe's mom, Anna, who's been an Arlington lady for over 25 years and is a retired educator, both at the high school and college level. And Joe's dad is here too, uh, retired air defense and foreign area officer. And I'll talk a little bit about that and give um, all those experiences to Joe growing up. And I think we have uh, some folks here from USMA 92. Where's USMA 92 at? All right. 
rowdy bunch. All right, neighbors and church friends and even some high school classmates from the graduating class of 1988 out of Cairo, Egypt. How many, how many kids were in that class? Like not 88? That's a little more than I thought. Joe's time growing up, moving around based on his dad's army career included stops not just in Cairo, but also Germany, India, Iran, which not many can say, and all over the US. Joe was the captain of the sailing team at West Point, including a win over Navy, got that right, and initially commissioned as a military police officer. After his initial assignment, Joe thought about getting out, but decided to stay after being selected for the fully, fully funded legal education program, or FLEP. I'm used to calling that FLEP. He's had opportunities to leave since, but has stayed, as so many have, because of the people and the mission. Joe describes the Army JAG Corps as being the most consequential law practice on earth, and he's been an increasingly important part of this practice for the last 25 years. Joe served in our legal enterprise at every echelon, deploying to Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq, and beyond, and many of those deployments came at JSOC, where then Lieutenant General McChrystal hired Joe to be a command SJA while he was still a major. Joe was also a plans officer up here at headquarters Department of the Army, enjoying the riveting force structure and budget work under then TJAG Lieutenant General Dana Chipman. Uh, we asked General Chipman for some thoughts about Joe's promotion, and he said, I like to think about Joe Berger sitting behind closed doors with CSA George being tortured on a myriad of legal issues. <laughs> In the same way that I sat behind closed doors with the vice, as then Colonel George took notes on the various tasks I had just received. Then I would call young plans officer Berger, then I would call in young plans officer Berger to torture him on any issue needing analysis that could make my life easier. Joe always delivered. A nice circle now closed. Getting back to Joe, he's all He's also been a part of our legislative liaison team and served as the SGA for our cyber. As a GO, he's taken just about every hard job that he can take. He was the commanding general of the U.S. Army Legal Services Agency, leading an exceptional team that has daily impact across our entire Army. He then commanded the JAG Legal Center and School in Charlottesville, Virginia, ensuring our next generation of Army legal professionals were educated, trained, and prepared for the challenges they would face out in our formations. And he spent the last three years as our Deputy Judge Advocate General running and keeping the trains on time for our entire legal enterprise. But I want to go back to his time in Charlottesville for a moment. I think it's quite fitting that he got the chance to be the CG down there. Uh, Major General Rob Borcherding was kind enough to share this anecdote. While a student at CGSC, it's getting to be a long time ago now, Joe. Then Major Berger volunteered to run with then Lieutenant General Petraeus for PT one morning. As the CAC commander, General Petraeus asked if there was room for improvement at the JAG schoolhouse. As a matter of fact, Major Berger did have some suggestions. <laughs> Not surprisingly, Major Berger soon received a call from then Brigadier General Butch Tate the commander of the JAG Legal Center and school. It just so happened that he'd, been, he'd be visiting Fort Leavenworth over the weekend, I'm not sure that was a planned visit, and invited Major Berger to breakfast to share his thoughts. Major Berger invited Rob Borcherding to join him as a sort of plus one. <laughs> On the drive there, they discussed the possibility that this could be Major Berger's last breakfast in uniform. <laughs> But after some good-natured ribbing by General Tate about using something called the chain of command, <laughs> Major Berger survived the episode with only some additional homework. Joe has always been ready to dive in and do what needed to be done. He inspires his team with positive and genuine leadership. He is selfless in mentoring others. He likes to talk about the caliber of teams and individuals that he works with, but he's the one who brings out their best and enables his subordinates, peers, and even those uh, that he worked for, he works for to succeed. I have no doubt, Joe, that you are ready 
more than ready for the challenges ahead. I'm going to end here with a little bit of what I like to call old, my, old man advice for senior leaders. I know you've heard it before, but I always think it's worth hearing. The first is keep your interactions positive, and I know this is something that you already excel at, um, but you can remember uh, meeting a general, especially a three-star three, three general, and the TJAG, and every interaction that you're going to have with people, they are going to remember it, even though it's just a chance interaction for you. So remember to keep your interactions positive. Second, always remember how your de decisions are going to affect our soldiers and families and our formations. Everything that we do inside this building, the real purpose is to support our formations that are out there um, that we know we're going to go in harm's way. And three, have fun. Everybody wants, everybody's looking at you and all those T-JAG, you know, all those JAGs back there. Um, and no one likes to be around somebody that isn't having a good time. So there are going to be some tough issues, but have fun. I'm also going to add two more comments. These are pro bono um, for you um, as our next T-JAG. Um, the first is help us keep us, help keep us on the straight and narrow, but don't let us be confined by the rules and regulations that may not have kept pace with the times. And second, help us figure out how we empower our commanders. As I've grown up in the Army, I've had the world's best JAG lawyers at my side all along the way. We can and will move faster what our current environment demands if we get authorities to the right level. We are blessed to have you leading the most consequential law practice in the world, Joe. Let's get some Lieutenant General rank on you. Please remain seated during the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Joseph B. Berger III. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted from Major General to Lieutenant General by order of the Secretary of the Army. Replacing the jacket rank is Major General Berger's spouse, Brenna, and his son, Jeb. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Joseph B. Berger III. I gotta say, 
The view from this foxhole, it's a little overwhelming. It really is. A huge thanks, first of all, to the team responsible for putting on this ceremony, to Master Sergeant Smith, uh, our talented vocalist, simply amazing and representative of the incredible talent we have in our Army, the protocol team, and my legal teammates who've done the planning, the setup, the ushering, and I know who will still be here when I walk out the door. Well done, and thank you very much. Finally, to the lead team of Tim Davis, Chris Wittenberger, and Trent Powell, I owe all of you, there's some bottles of bourbon in my office, come by for a visit. <laughs> Chaplain Green, thank you. Thanks for focusing us, each in our own way, to remind us that there's something bigger that's truly important. Bill's typical, for those of you who don't know him, and he might have even already left because he had a flight to catch, but he literally made the time for this. He is typical of the amazing teammates on the Army staff. Bill and I spent a lot of time arguing about the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, but our conversations are collegial, they're informed, and they are ultimately productive, to which I simply say, amen. <laughs> Chief, thanks for those kind words. Thanks for the trust and the opportunity to continue doing what I love to do and for which my passion grows more and more every day. Three decades ago, I never imagined I would do this for more than a few years. Heck, I tried to cost commission into the Coast Guard only to have the Commandant of Cadets, General Dave Bramlett, throw me out of his office. <laughs> Along the way, I've drafted my resignation and I've drafted my retirement. But the we is stronger than the I, and that is the captivating power of our Army. Because once you've experienced the consequentiality of what the American people entrusts and the world expects us to do, and the incredible teammates with whom we get to do it, it's hard, if not impossible, to imagine doing anything else. So thank you for the privilege of being able to continue to serve in this unique capacity. I am here because of other people. The assemblage of senior leaders here in the front who've reached out and those who've reached out over the past few weeks is a bit overwhelming. I thank you all, not just for the examples of your leadership, but for the experience of having been led by you. Because when you're as stubborn as me, consequential and experiential learning is a lot more effective. <laughs> you have all individually and collectively empowered me to ensure my teams succeeded then and will succeed tomorrow. So any accolades I enjoy standing here today both belong to and are the gifts of others. First, my family, Brenna. Despite the Slacker Six nickname, you are a climate change level force of nature. In your support, in your patience, in your humor, you spent countless years as a functional single parent. We have two amazing young adults who don't live in our basement for right now, um, and that's proof of your awesomeness. You lead your own team at work with a tireless dedication that inspires me, and you tolerate the fact that I still have no idea which day is trash day, which day is recycling day, and which day is for lawn cuttings. Every day truly is Valentine's Day. <laughs> Today is nothing because it's Monday. <laughs> Jeb, you inspire me in ways that I don't think you can imagine. Your grit and resilience is matched only by your care and compassion for others. I have never seen another human being who never burns a single bridge and crosses back over every one of them time and again. Thank you for an example of what right looks like. And more importantly, thanks for being a world-class sailing partner. Caroline, who's watching us from London, cheers. Your focus and drive are enviable. I hope every day I show a love for what I do that matches the passion you have for your calling and thanks for the artwork on today's program. As the Chief noted, that is a single line pen drawing. Once that pen hit the paper, it didn't come back up. Her stick figure challenged father stands in awe. <laughs> As I assembled the invitation list for today, I realized there's no known universe in which time exists to thank everyone who merits public recognition, but I'd be remiss not to thank a few. To my fellow senior leaders here on the Army and the Joint Staffs, as well as across the world, thanks for the great teammate. We solve hard problems for our Army, the Joint Force, our nation, and the world. A few specific personal recognitions are absolutely necessary. General Risch, thank you for your trust in me as your deputy and the confidence that as this new team comes together, we will continue to move our JAG Corps forward. General Miller, you remain the irreplaceable, break glass in case of emergency, phone a friend, mentor, and coach. And General Chipman, a while back, you dropped everything. All right, not everything, but at least you're lounging in retirement pickleball racket. 
and spent a few hours helping me understand the terrain enough to map out the next few years. For an Army and JAG Corps transforming in contact, plans are indeed nothing, but planning is indeed everything. Those few hours are simply emblematic of your enduring commitment to the success of our Army, and your investment continues to empower this team. General Mangum, a small group of commanders truly taught me how to provide principled counsel. You empowered me as a new major with your trust. You coached me, sometimes more directly than others, to get to right but not to yes. And in doing so, you enabled my team to support a regiment engaged in multiple wars across the globe. It was a hell of a pod ride. I've strived to pay that forward. Seven years worth of brigade commanders attending our senior officer legal orientation have had success explained to them in terms of our relationship. So if we got it wrong, our Army's in bad shape. <laughs> uh, Admiral McRaven, you're not here, but I, I have to recognize you and the amazing team you formed took that early field grade education and turned it into a PhD. Through your leadership, generals like Votel, Thomas, Clark, Carrilla, LeCamry, LeCamera, Ashley, and more all trusted my team to ensure that in a time of extreme violence and in a complex geopolitical environment, the counsel we provided ensured we retained the moral high ground as we engaged our nation's enemies. Your personal example and those of your team provided enduring waypoints and guardrails. For that team, there was no doubt that this is truly the most consequential practice of law on earth. And General Ashley, more than part of that education, you gave me the single best piece of advice I've ever received as a general officer, and we talked about that last night. I've shared it with my fellow GOs, and I truly think about it every day. Thank you. General Potter, our director of the Army staff and the staff you lead. Your trust in our team's mastery of the law and the principled counsel it informs empowers us to ensure our Army remains above reproach as we solve truly hard problems. On behalf of our team, represented today by our HQDA teammates from OTJAG, U.S. Army Legal Services Agency, the Legal Center and School, and countless other organizations, thank you. To extended family back to this side of the room, including Burgers, McCarthy's, Harrington's, and more, whether it was opening your door for multiple Thanksgivings in a row so Brennan and the kids had somewhere to be, or a visit to find us in some distant corner of the world, thanks for being ports in any of a number of storms. Another sailing reference, sorry, sir. <laughs> to the spiders in the crowd, Brenna truly appreciates your lifelong friendship. And to Brenna's colleagues from the National Endowment for the Arts, you give life to the liberties we protect. To our neighbors, fellow Pohickians, and more, thanks for being part of our lives and taking the time to share in this milestone and allowing me to introduce you to this incredible Army team. For many on the family and friends side of the room, this is a first ever Army event. I promise you, no one in uniform bites. As long as you don't share shady secrets about my past, I encourage you to all get to know each other a little better. We are, after all, your Army. Well, not yours, Natalie, but we have a good relationship with our Canadian counterparts. <laughs> to my West Point classmates, I am humbled to be counted among your ranks and will do my best to continue to represent the brave and the few. Beat Navy. To my high school classmates from Cairo, Egypt, fellowship over dinner Saturday was yet another reminder of our unique shared experience. Four high schools by spring break of my junior year was a tough part of growing up in this profession. This group made the remains of that year, senior year, and the 36 years since all worth it. Shukran. Finally, to the men and women of the most consequential practice of law on earth, I am awestruck to be your 42nd Judge Advocate General over the next four years. It is not false humility to say I never envisioned standing here, Kate Donnelly's persistent T. Joe moniker, nickname notwithstanding. My career path has made me an unlikely, if not improbable, JAG Corps senior leader, but I didn't get here alone. I start with a blanket thank you to every member of the regiment, past and present, who had a hand in that. I've thanked many of you privately, but some I must thank publicly. To my leadership teams, XOs, and the front office teams over the past seven years as a general officer, you've empowered me to focus on team and mission. A wise platoon sergeant, Sergeant First Class Ken Opaki, tried to lay that foundation a lifetime ago with a second lieutenant, Joe Berger. You continue to help shape this clay into something useful. To our soon departing leaders, Allie and George, thank you. To the assembling leadership team, Regimental Command Sergeant Major Mike Bostick, Generals Borcherding, Kennebec, Chief Richmond, Mr. Kuhn, Ms. Carlisle, Ms. Osprung, Mr. Johnson, 
and very soon to be generals Ranieri and Erisman. I could not imagine a better lineup in the ultimate team sport, and I am proud and excited to wear the same jersey. To our National Guard and Reserve teammates, our challenges are often unique, but our purpose is singular. I will build on that foundation. And to my fellow TJAGs, the SGA to the Commandant, and your deputies, you have been awesome partners. We never fight alone as a service, be it on a battlefield or in the Pentagon policy battle space. I remain and recommit to our collective efforts. To my Five Eyes partners watching remotely, you humble me with your interest at this late hour around the globe. But we've never fought alone as a nation. Your partnership's invaluable to ensure we collectively maintain the legal and moral high ground. The American soldier is the greatest asymmetric weapon on Earth. And as Lieutenant General Pyatt often commented, no branch in our Army is better, soldier for soldier, civilian for civilian, than the JAG Corps. As our pacing item, you, the men and women of our JAG Corps, uniformed and civilian, must continue to ensure we are what our individual clients and our Army needs us to be. This new leadership team will empower you to do so. From that individual soldier or family member distracted or burdened by a personal legal issue to that accused facing loss of liberty or even life, I know you will be the faces of justice. To our military justice enterprise, including the Office of the Special Trial Counsel and those who defend those who defend the Constitution, I am confident we will achieve justice while maintaining our Army's critical expeditionary military justice capabilities. To the lifeblood of our Army, the legal I'm sorry, our administrative law attorneys, our Army would grind to a halt without you. Thank you. To those deployed doing our nation's bidding, Godspeed. To our national security law practitioners, you must continue to ensure our Army can fight and win across the spectrum from competition to conflict in a manner that marks us as professionals, committed to upholding the rule of law in the face of the changing nature of warfare and against adversaries who simply don't. To the entire team of legal professionals, from civil litigators to contract and fiscal experts, office soldiers counsel to special victim counsel, legal assistance attorneys to our claims experts, those who train and educate our Corps and our Army to environmental experts who ensure access to critical training areas, and especially the paralegals and legal administrators who make it happen, I remain in grateful awe of your mastery of the law, of your commitment to our clients, and your dedication to our Army. The Corps is its people. As legal professionals, our intellect through mastery of the law and principled counsel is what we bring to the fight and to daily struggles in garrison. In sum, I thank our Army's leadership for their trust. As your leadership, I pass that trust on to you, the men and women of our JAG Corps. I commit that my investment every day in this team and in our Army will match the magnitude of the opportunity with which I've been entrusted. This will defend. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and join in the singing of the Army song led by Master Sergeant Smith. The words can be found on the back of your program. March along, sing a song with the Army of the Free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. 
For where'er we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. You are cordially invited to attend a reception next door in the Quran Ballroom at Patton Hall, where you may congratulate Lieutenant General Berger and his family in the receiving line. You are welcome to help yourself to food and drink prior to joining the receiving line. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.